these um, triangles on my finger it represents all of my sisters and myself, and we're temples. This represents the South Island, so I've come up from the South Island. And this is my story, you know, about my upbringing. It also hides all my track marks from when I was using intravenous needles. And this is me, and I'm holding five of my children. And the breath coming out of my nose is the actual breath of life. I grew up in Christchurch. We moved around quite a few times. And mum was the child before me. She had lost her partner to death also. And then um, she was just looking for love and then she ended up with my dad. And then when my dad left with another lady, she just found more love, you know, from another guy that was, you know, wanting to love her too. We sort of were numb to everything, me and my sisters. We just played like it was just another day. But I think as I got older, it really did affect me. And I noticed and I could feel and see in those certain times, you know, when she did have different partners and when we were at different houses, how much it did affect us. Hanging with these young kids from school, some of them actually ended up leaving school and they were involved with, some of them were Christchurch City Street kids, which they became my family because, you know, they could get anybody's car <laughs> with a fork or, you know, a pair of scissors. And I started getting into that sort of stuff. I had ran away from home and uh, we were living in Peterborough Street in Christchurch. One of the girls was involved with the mob and uh, it was one of the boys, one of the um, street kids, 21st. And um, she invited the mob, but nobody knew that the mob were coming. And um, yeah, they sort of just came in and, you know, had their own way. This guy was full of tattoos and he took me out to where the front door was to come inside. He asked me to do some things that I didn't even really know what to do, but he just sort of forced me into doing it. After I got raped, and then I went back to the streets with my um, street kid family, and I ended up with a prospect for the Black Pa, and um, I moved in with him and his mum, and uh, she was the mama of the Christchurch Black Pa. I went to the doctors and the doctor said I was three months pregnant. I really thought about this because I was gonna have an abortion. Only reason being, because there was a lot of violence in the house and I didn't want to put another child through all this violence. So I was debating all day whether to tell him or not. One of his boys rang my phone and said, my partner got shot. And I was just like, what? I just like dropped the phone. My first reaction was jump in the car. He had been shot nine times. The last shot was over here in between his eyes. So they said they could operate on him, but he wouldn't have a brain. His brain was shattered. And um, so he would more or less be a cabbage. And his brother didn't want him to live like that. He said he wouldn't want to live like that. But I didn't care, like, you know, I wanted to tell him I was pregnant. I wanted, you know, I wanted the kids to have a father. And I wanted us to move away. From the gang life. And, um, and, and I couldn't. So um, they operated and they turned the machine off and they turned the machine off, and he died. I ended up having these really bad drug addictions. I had already had addictions, but it was a normal life because the drugs were always there. But then I realised I couldn't go without them being in my life. I ended up getting my children taken off me from child, youth and family there. Not long after, I left my house and I moved in with my older sister. And I said, I really want to get off all these drugs and that. 
And one morning she came in and she said to me, she goes, oh, I need you to go and pick harakeke with this lady. And I was like, oh, I don't want to go because I'm thinking of my next fix. But I'm also trying to get off it. But I was, that was my first thing I'd think about, just waking up, is where am I going to get my next fix? And this Māori lady turns up and I jumped in the car and I was like, you know, had a real bad attitude, didn't want to do this. And then we got to this uh, kura kaupapa in Opawa and we started cutting flax. But she knew everything that was going on with me. So she started saying, um, you're seeing things and you're hearing things. And every time she spoke it out, it felt like it left me. And I said to her, what do I have to do? And she said, you have to find unconditional love. And I said, what's unconditional love? I don't know. I can't even spell unconditional love. And she said, just follow your heart. And I looked down at my heart and I looked at her and I'm like, how am I going to do this? Out of the blue, Child Youth and Family had rang me and said, uh, look, we need to give your kids back. And I was just like, pardon? Like, you're going to give my kids back? And they said, yeah. In that time, I had gone in and I had enrolled myself in Māori Mental Health. I enrolled myself in Literacy and Numeracy. And um, I was now and then calling into the Salvation Army. I ended up walking into the Salvation Army Family Store. As I was in there, I sort of would potter around and just tidy up a little bit as I was looking for things. This lady comes straight up and she goes, I see you in here often. Do you want to come and volunteer for us? And I was like, oh, yeah, OK. She's like, just on Thursdays. And I was there every day after that. So this place here, where we're standing, is our front foyer. And um, this is where Fano come, and um, they come and they talk to our receptionist, and they either get a food parcel or they talking to our um, want to talk to our emergency housing. It's the same concept as on a marae, you know. You're welcomed in, and we have a lot of kai over here, and people can just help themselves to it. And, yeah. We also on Friday nights we have a recovery church. And it's just about people that had addictions and still have addictions and people that need a direction in life. And um, we meet up here on Friday nights and then we give them a kai, so we have another feed. It's all about feeding the people. Yeah, I know. It won't be long, eh? It won't be yeah. long. <laughs> you go down there, I'll walk to you. <laughs> we have an um, outreach in Kaikui. And um, this is Brother Jack, one of our number Kilda one volunteers. And um, we're just getting some food parcels ready. We just want to go and bless the people and let them know well, what we do is share the love of Jesus. That's what it mainly is. Finally, I can't wait to get down there and see what the deal is. They're like, wow. Yeah. So this is Sarah. This is another one of our volunteers. And um, she's here just about every day of the week. Thank God for that. You know, our volunteers are gold here. I just love helping and I just love the vibe here. The people here are amazing. They're like family to me and Aww. yeah, they've helped me on my journey and yeah, I just love everything about this place. The good vibes, good vibes all yeah. day, every day. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. When it came to Sunday, I rang up my mother-in-law and I said, do you want to come to church with me? Or we've been invited. She turned up and we went into the church. I just cried like a baby. Like everything I was thinking and I could feel this lady that was on the stage just sang everything that was in me. And as she sang everything that was in me, I just sat there and cried like this little kid. The lady that was the worship leader, she started speaking to me and she was talking to me about her testimony. And she talked about how she was raped when she was younger and I'm just like, oh, look at you. You're beautiful. And she goes, yes, because Jesus does this to me. And I'm just like, where is he? Can I meet him? And she said, of course you can meet him. Do you want to give your life to him? And I was like, yeah, all right. If, you know, looking at her, thinking if he's going to do that with you, he can do it with me. And then she goes, OK, just repeat these words after me. And we went through the sinner's prayer. Life is good today. That word still has its ups and downs, but because I've grown to know who I am 
and who he is, who God is. You know, I'm a lot stronger, a lot more mature. <laughs> yeah. That's the main thing, I reckon, is once you know who you are in him, then um, it's, it makes you a lot more stronger.